In other news, a group called the Patriot Party of Mississippi traveled to Washington to participate in that rally on Wednesday. Before the pro-Trump violence broke out, they were greeted by two Mississippi politicians, Republican U.S. reps Trent Kelly and Michael Guest, who represents the state's third congressional district. I believe essentially simultaneous to, uh, to the riots at the U.S. Capitol, where people were waving Confederate flags Mississippi was removing its, uh, or replacing its uh, Confederate-themed flag after 126 years. Big moment. Seeing it flying officially above the state capitol for the first time was something special. Extreme weather is also creating a water crisis in Mississippi's largest city. The huge winter storm that devastated much of the country last month has also left Jackson, Mississippi without drinkable water for the past two weeks. This is really just a, a conversation about who state leaders see as worthy of help. Jackson is <laughs> the capital city. If the capital city fails, Mississippi ultimately will fail. The governor signed a bill on Thursday that limits transgender athletes from team sports on the basis of genders they're born with. Why was this a priority? It's a good question. At no point during the process could any lawmaker who supported the bill pinpoint a specific time in which this was this had come up in Mississippi. The NCAA released a statement saying championship games will be held in areas where hosts can commit to an environment that's safe and free of discrimination. First tonight, Mississippi's medical marijuana program is halted following a ruling by the state Supreme Court. The high court struck down Initiative 65, ruling in favor of a lawsuit that says the state's ballot initiative process is outdated. It's going to become clear that that's kind of the issue that needs to be worked out if there is a special session. These guys want to get reelected. I mean, <laughs> come on, this is the will of the people. This is what the majority of people in your state want. Um, you know, I don't really understand what the what the problem is there. Way to end the drought, Mississippi State, the national champions. You know, for most of them, it's a dream come true. Things are so bad in Jackson, Mississippi, they're opening a second emergency field hospital there. We heard a dire warning from the state's top medical professionals who said that at this current trajectory of new COVID cases, knowing that so many Mississippians are unvaccinated and that those, those people, of course, are the ones who uh, are getting sickest and needing hospital care, they warned us that the hospital system across the state of Mississippi could fail within a matter of days. Delta variant is affecting kids a lot more directly than the previous variant. Where is Tate Reeves? What your organization has been writing uh, is a figment of your imagination uh, as to what I have said. I have been consistent uh, for since the day I was on Facebook Live in January that I believe that the best course of action for individuals is to get vaccinated. But even though I believe that, Jeff, I don't be even begin to think I'm so much smarter. Unlike some of you, I don't think I'm so much smarter than every other Mississippian that I ought to be telling them what to do. Look, I, Reeves, that's part of his playbook to, to blame the media for many things. I've got news for him. This is not just the media asking, where are you and what are you doing? And, these are, these are terrifying times. In the heart of the Mississippi Delta, a high school football team and its unlikely success is captivating the state. With barely enough players to take the field, Greenville Christian Academy has knocked out football powerhouses. Just the story, here we are 50 years after integration spawned the private school league with, you know, so much white flight from the public school system to, to create the private school league that is now the dominant football team in, in that league is all African American. Now we turn to a 12 news update. The auditor Shad White says that NFL Hall of Fame quarterback Brett Favre has repaid the state of Mississippi $600,000 in misspent welfare money, but he still owes another $282,000 in interest. 
All eyes on the Supreme Court today. Oral arguments begin over the constitutionality of a Mississippi law banning most abortions after 15 weeks. The case could threatening the nearly 50 year legal precedent of Roe v. Wade and upend abortion rights in this country. There were massive, massive protests in Washington um, at the Supreme Court building for both sides, both uh, sort of abortion access uh, advocates and, and supporters versus the anti-abortion protesters. And, and um, you know, I guess that was what most of the nation saw. But in Mississippi, it was it was interesting. I think you very clearly got the sense that this coalition was not just Mississippi based, but that it was multi state, um, that they had invited advocates from Georgia, from Louisiana, from Alabama. There were protesters there from Texas, from a lot of different places, rallying around the idea that even if this, if Roe is overturned, even if this ban is upheld, that these people will still be here, they will still be providing access to anyone who needs it.